So it's only been a day since I last recorded a video. And in that video I said, the next time you see me, I'll probably have my new wheels on. Well, I don't have them yet. I did get notification today though that the wheels have arrived in the US. Today is Friday the 20th. So my guess would be I'll see them probably Tuesday of next week. That's my hope anyway. But I was uh, kind of chit-chatting in the comments of my last video with uh, Jet Blast. He was asking about the brakes that are on this bike because he got the 2018 Giant Defy, which has the Giant uh, Contend, sorry, not Contend, Giant Conduct braking system versus the first generation Shimano 105 hydraulic system. And if I was gonna talk about the differences between the two systems, I don't have a lot of experience with the conduct system. Uh, I know when I was originally looking at buying a bike, I was kind of in the market for either the Giant Contend, S, I think it was the SL2, um, which was a disc version of the Contend. Um, and it came with the, the conduct braking system. Um, and when I saw it, I, I thought that it looked kind of clunky. I, I wasn't a fan of it. Like looking at it, I thought, man, that's, that's over complicating the system, right? So you, with the conduct system, you've got a cable operated uh, shifter lever. So it's like your traditional shifters that you would buy if you had a rim brake bike. And then there's a, a converter that sits at the front of your stem. And that converter houses a hydraulic piston that you basically run the cables to from your, uh, from your, your shifter levers. And then the, um, And then the, uh, the converter pulls on a piston, or the, the cable pulls on a piston that actuates a hydraulic, well, piston, <laughs> a hydraulic operation, and converts that mechanical action into a hydraulic action. Um, and I didn't know that that system actually has existed now for a while. Giant just made their own version of it. It's actually been something that's been used, I think in cyclocross for quite a while. So it's, it's actually a proven system. It's not the Giants version of it is proven necessarily, but I will say that it, what my first fear was is that it seemed like the first attempt at doing something different. And I thought, what's the advantage, right? Like why do that extra step? Um, and later on, I kind of figured it out. So the first generation of the Shimano 105 hydraulic shifter levers are just plain ugly and uncomfortable. I can say it because I've been riding them now for over a year. They do not look as good nor feel as good as either A, the newest <clears throat> Shimano 105 levers, or B, just about any other lever that was out there. Um, in 2018, they, they spec'd out the 105 hydraulic um, system for the, the Defy to have regular 105 levers and use their conduct system, probably because of complaints would be my guess. 
Um, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, so let me try to bring it back on topic. These levers, well, they work great. I don't have any complaints about how they work. They're very big. They're wider um, as far as the grip. They're longer as far as the grip. And they have this bump right here. And that bump, depending on how big your hands are, um, can either feel just fine. Like for me, it doesn't feel bad, but it, it can be annoying. Especially like if you're trying to hold it kind of midway up, that bumps right, right on kind of a pressure point. <clears throat> so as far as the comfort goes, these grips are not very comfortable in all positions, right? Holding it like this, they're fine. Holding it up here, for me anyway, they're fine. If you had much larger hands though, I could see that bump being right in your palm or right on the meat of your, your thumb. I don't know what that area of your hand is called. I'm not a, a doctor. Damn it, Jim, I'm not a doctor. Anyway, so these levers, they weren't winning any uh, aesthetic awards because they're ugly. They're big, bulbous. They're not as crisp as the 105 levers were for this generation of 105, which I want to say was 5,700. I can't remember exactly, but I think it's 57, might've been 5,800. Whatever the first year they did an 11 speed 105 for. I think that's 5,800. Um, so these were the hydraulic 5,800s. But you could tell that Shimano, they weren't very happy with them either because they didn't get badged as 105. They got badged as 505, which to me says that, yeah, they weren't proud of them. So if you paid a little extra and you got the, uh, the next model level up of the Defy of this year, 2017, um, go check out Harvey's, I think it's Har Harvey Cycling. I think that's who it is. Um, you can see what his look like. So in 2017, the Altegra level hydraulic brakes were much more the same size and shape of traditional hoods and shift levers. Um, and I think they've refined them even yet again. I know the 105s, this year they, uh, they came out with a true hydraulic 105 that it's hard to tell the difference between the standard caliper brake 105s or the cable operated 105s and the hydraulic. Whew, I'm tired. With my hub doing what it's doing where it's, it's basically dragging. <sighs> takes more power, more effort. <sighs> and that's that creaking sound you can hear. It's the hub. Sucks. <sighs> anyway, so the conduct brakes. Here's what I see as the negatives. First negative is the brake rotors are actually smaller. And this is probably the biggest negative. So I didn't realize at the time how big a difference the brake rotors can make. But now that I've had more experience with it, I know a little bit better. Um, and 
the conduct brakes uh, from what I see online. I've not measured them. I've not put my hands on them. But what the the uh, the web says on Giant's website is that it's a 140 millimeter disc rotor and not a 160. Now on these and other Shimano uh, hydraulic brakes, I believe they're all 160s or bigger. And for road use, it's probably not that big a deal. Probably. Um, for mountain bikes, I mean, mountain bikes will get up to like 203 millimeter, so they can get huge. But you'll typically see them, you know, like 180, 190 mil. And that's because the bigger the disc, the, the, the less the heat will affect the braking. Because as your disc gets hot, your braking suffers. And as the braking suffers, you know, if you're doing a long descent, with lots of applied brake, you start to get less force and you generate more heat. Again, I've never heard anybody say, wow, yeah, the 140s, they just absolutely get cooked on a downhill and so you can't stop at all. Never heard anybody say that. But is it a possibility? Well, you're gonna cook a 140 before you're gonna cook a 160 or a 180 or any other size. So, is it a factor? Yes. And I think a 140 is gonna be harder to find replacement discs for than a 160, because when I've looked online, I've seen a lot more selections for 160s than I have for 140s. Like I said, 160s are about the smallest um, common size you'll see. And the uh, the 160s are going to be, you know, I'd say optimal for road use. Other, other differences. Obviously there's a little more involved with a converter, right? You're adding another failure point. So something could go wrong. Uh, with a straight hydraulic system, you know, you got one system, one thing to mess with. With the cables, when it's time to replace that cable, one, you gotta buy a cable. Cable stretch, so that adds a little bit of a, a factor in tuning the brakes. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's a huge factor. It's just a factor. Um, is that enough of a factor to sway you from not getting the system? I don't know. It was for me, but I'm not knocking the brakes. I'm just saying they're different. I'm sure they're perfectly fine for 99% of the uses out there and they probably have very little that ever goes wrong with them. Again, if they were a problem, I'm sure Giant would have heard about it and they would have gone away from it. However, Giant went full into it and now the entry level bikes for both the Conduct or the Content, I should say, the Defy, and the TCR even. They all have that new brake system. And I'm sure that's a way that they save a little bit of money because they're not paying Shimano. They're doing it in-house. But I don't think that they would take a huge step backwards and give up a lot of um, performance. 
in order to, to save those couple of bucks. But maybe they would, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not hearing or seeing anything online that says, yeah, this, this braking system's garbage or trash, sucks. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, it works well enough that giant sticking with it and going all in with it really uh, the other thing i was going to address with the defy is being a carbon fiber bike you got to be careful of things that get loose and things that shake or rattle or rub so specifically to you jet blast I see you've got a pump and stuff mounted on your frame. Keep an eye on that stuff, man. That, uh, that pump, if it's vibrating at all, it's gonna wear away at the frame and it's gonna do damage. Uh, pay attention to the way that your cable housings are run. On my Defy, I actually had a zip tie up here, or down here, I should say. Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay. Okay, as I was about to say, um, the, uh, man, I'm a terrible cameraman, so I'm not sure where I'm actually pointed at right now. Uh, on, on your bike, anywhere something could be loose. For instance, if you look in right here, you'll see a wear spot. That wear spot is because on this back bottle right here, I had a different cage, a bottle cage, and the bottle cage allowed the bottle to touch the frame right there. And so just from the vibration of the bottle touching there, it started to wear a pretty good little spot in the frame. Um, the same is true up here. Um, there's just a little tiny wear spot right there from where the cable housing ran across and I didn't have these frame protectors on there at the time. I do now, just in case, but but anyway. So at least I caught this before it got super, super bad. I mean, it's just barely through the first layer of paint right there. Um, and then if you look at the forks, you know, obviously you're gonna get chips. You're gonna get road chips, things like that. They just, they just are, you know, things that are gonna happen. You can't really, can't really be too, too concerned. It's a carbon fiber bike. It's gonna get chipped. Um, what I've heard for repairs is to get nail polish and just put nail polish over it and, and put a clear coat over the top of the nail polish and that's supposed to give you a, uh, a pretty good layer of protection as well as color matching. There's a lot of different types of um, nail polish colors out there so you can really find one that matches the color of your bike so that's the suggestion that I've heard. Um, Outside of that, uh, the differences between this model year and last year's model year, the 2017, 2018, the, the biggest difference is just Giant really put more of their own stuff on there. Oh, this is it. Let me show you too. So from a side profile, you can really see the difference of this gear um, shifter versus say the more traditional one. I think the more traditional ones, they probably, the hoods probably stop right there. Maybe a little bit more. But because of this extra length, here, here's the big downsides. This 105 shifter didn't have any adjustability to it. So I can't bring in this travel at all. I don't think that there's an adjustment screw. At least I've never seen an adjustment screw in here like the normal 105s have. Um, so that's an advantage that the conduct system has because it uses a traditional mechanical hood lever um, that you can actually bring in this, this, this distance. And because of how much longer this is, I think that the spacing here is that much longer. So when I'm in the drops, it's quite a reach for my small fingers to reach up and grab. So that's a disadvantage too. So all in all, the conduct system was an improvement over this system for comfort. I can't speak to the performance because like I said, you know, it obviously performs well enough that they went full in on getting it on all of their entry level disc brake, uh, disc brake bikes. Um, the rotor size of the conduct is a 140 instead of a 160. 
and you know the advantages to the 160s are it's going to stop with less heat or there will be less heat generated on long descents things like that um, so it will have better performance over a long descent on a 160 than a 140 will um, in my opinion there's less to go wrong obviously you're full hydraulic so if something goes wrong it goes wrong with adding that extra piece up front here that converter is that really gonna have any issue as far as reliability probably not because you know it's it's essentially doing the same thing that the housing in here is doing you know it's applying the same compression to the line that whatever the mechanism is here it's just now instead of it being a lever that's doing it's a cable that's doing it so really i'm probably making it sound more complicated than it really is um but again the system giant system is uh is is modeled after another system and i'm trying to remember who the the company is that makes it but it's out there I, after i did more research on the, the the system after the fact that converter the head converter um it's quite common that cyclocross bikes from a few years ago were using it um and so giant simply just either a borrowed or b stole the idea probably stole it um and is using it and you know it it's working it's working well enough that they're all in they're they're going 100 percent all their entry level disc brake bikes um from the defy to the contend sl to the tcr it every one of them is using that system when you step up to the Ultegra, i think the Ultegra bikes are coming full Ultegra. i'm not 100 percent sure on that i can't remember but i know that that the 2017 Ultegras were a significant improvement as far as comfort goes because in 2017 the Ultegra hydraulic brakes were were better so really in 2018 what shimano did is they they essentially moved the Ultegra shifter or 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 hood down to 105 i believe the Ultegras got a little more of dura aces technology and then dura ace of course got their better hydraulic shifters so now all in 2018 all of the shimano 105 hydraulic systems are that much more uh, compact comfortable system they got rid of this bolts bulgy mass they got rid of this horrible hump they made it you know the traditional link so everything is back to looking better feeling better is better um so you know 2017 it's kind of a one-off system um but that's just what they did other than that you know i i'm i'm sitting here still rambling i just do that a lot uh i don't have any negatives really to say about the 2017s um oh sorry the one negative the biggest negative and i'm i'm only just now really experiencing it i guess it was kind of a negative that other people had been experiencing but i just didn't know about it uh harvey um and I'm going to put Harvey's channel uh, somewhere in the video. So if you want to go see Harvey's channel, Harvey basically has a 2017 Ultegra level uh, Giant Defy Advanced. So he got the Giant Defy Advanced 1. This is the Giant Defy Advanced 2. Um, so the 1 was an Ultegra level Giant Defy. Um, and he had the exact same problem that I am having. His rear hub basically died on him multiple times. He had it serviced multiple times. It was covered by warranty multiple times. Mine was covered by warranty the first time. I'm sure it will be covered by warranty the second time. But the fact that it died, this hub died within six months of having uh, of having the service done, having the re the, the hub rebuilt. Um, because it died within six months, I'm I just have no confidence in in the hub anymore. Um, and Harvey had a great suggestion on the DT Swiss wheels. And I didn't realize how cheap they would be. You know, I was sitting here thinking, yeah, I don't really want to spend a thousand bucks on new wheels. Like if I'm going to spend a thousand bucks, I'm just going to save up another thousand. I'm going to get another bike or something like that. Right. Um, and then when I did a little bit of research, I found that no, they're not a thousand bucks. It's 400 bucks for both the front and back wheel. And it's a much higher quality wheel, better bearings, better, better, um, uh, hub system altogether lighter. It's a couple hundred grams lighter. Um, meant to run 28 mil tires like everything about it is just better it's an upgrade and Harvey's like dude once you get your new tires or new wheels it's gonna make a huge difference and I'm counting on that I'm gonna hold you to it Harvey 
I'll cross that pond and I'll come and slap you around. Uh, if 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 they don't work out, but I'm sure I'm sure they're gonna feel like smooth as glass, buttery buttery goodness. Um, but yeah. Anyway, let me talk about some tires too. So right now I've I've got all these tires. These these are all my tires that I've gone through. These uh, Grand Prix Four Seasons were the first upgraded tires that I went to after I got the bike. Um, when I bought the, the, the bike, the tires that came on it were just fine, uh, except within probably a month of having the bike, I ripped the sidewall out of, I think it was the rear tire. Um, I hit a rock. I, it's actually one of the first videos, or maybe not the first videos, but one of my first videos on this bike. Um, I hit a rock and it actually tore a little gash in the sidewall and i didn't realize it for probably a week or two until when i was pumping up the tire and i saw the the tube squeezing out just a little bubble squeezing out of the tire so i was like oh crap this could have been really bad um so that's what led me to getting new tires uh, as quickly as i did and i accidentally got 25 mil instead of 28 mil um, not that it would have mattered then uh, and I got the Four Seasons because they came highly rated for flat protection, yada, yada, yada. Well, this must be flat protection in somewhere where they don't have an excessive amount of goat heads or uh, I don't know what you call them anywhere else, but here we call them goat heads. They're basically these thorns, and they're just monster thorns. They're like little rocks with spikes on them, and they suck. And I was getting a flat like once or twice a week, and I was so pissed off that I said, you know, screw it forget these Continentals, I'm getting something else. So I looked online and I found Wiggle has a commuter tire, a 700C commuter tire, and it was 10 bucks, it was like 988 per tire. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna try these because they have a built-in breaker, this, da, 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 all these like great things for not getting flats. Got them, started getting flats again. Well, doesn't matter what you put on your rims, if you're riding over things that are gonna pierce, you know, through armor plating these 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 thorns are just insane out here so got to rethinking it thought you know what i need to just find a different system either tubeless because everything i've heard about tubeless is that you don't get flats you know the tubeless system just is designed for filling those holes when you get a hole yada yada, yada. well then i found slime tubes now if you're a performance guy slime tubes suck if you are just a regular commuter guy then slime tubes are awesome um, I have not had a flat since I put fly, slime tubes on the bike. Um, and within a few days of putting slime tubes on, I hit a patch of grass that was just like a pile of grass in the street. It was early morning, riding to work, hit that pile and just filled the tire with thorns. I mean, filled the tire, like at least seven or eight of these thorns were stuck in the tire. So much so that like the bike was like bumping along as I was going over each of the thorns, bump, 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 right? And I thought for sure, oh crap, right? I can see surviving one, maybe two thorns, but not all these thorns. Sure enough, not a single one of them caused a flat. Um, I could see where the, the little thorn holes were being filled with the, uh, the green slime stuff in the slime tires, and it did its job. So I'm, I'm a believer in the slime tires. I know that they are heavy. I know that they're slow. I know that they cause the wheel to be a little bit imbalanced, all those other negatives. So they're not a performance tube. Um, but they are a commuter's dream. Um, so when I put these new Continental uh, Grand Prix 4000 S2s on the bike, um, I put slime tubes in again, and I will run slime tubes probably forever. Um, if you get tubes or tubeless system, oh, oh, that's that's the thing, Jet Blast. Your bike's already set up tubeless, so you don't have to worry about flats anyway. Um, but if you get tubeless on your bike, awesome. I'm just not going to invest the time and the effort and all that other garbage to, to put a tubeless system on my bike. I'll just run with what I know is working because it's been working. Um, but So that's some advice for, for, for road bikes. If you ride like I do every day, commute to work, riding through crap, picking up you know thorns, whatnot. Um, that will help in the long run. Anyway, guys, I've rambled on way too long. I'm already getting tired. Just got home from work. It's a beautiful day. Let me check out my view. We got the mountain in the background. All these, all these homes. All these homes. Here, here's my view out the back. 
there. All these homes. Anyway, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you when I get those new hubs. Or, sorry, the new wheels. Peace.